Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be doing my Q&A today. I thought it'd be a nice way to celebrate reaching a thousand subscribers. It seems to be something of a tradition here on YouTube and there is something that you should know about me before we get started. I absolutely love to agonize over hypothetical scenarios. I was gonna say situations and changed midstream. So it's like, yeah, this video is gonna go really well, clearly. Um, I, I love to ponder. I am a ponderer, okay? I like to debate things that will never happen and just like fantasize to myself. That's how I keep myself amused. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to answer your questions as honestly as possible. Um, I, uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna start with Elizabeth's questions. Fellow, fellow math person right there, so I love that. Um, what do you think of the small caro bag? Small caro bag from Dior, I'll put up a picture. I like it, I don't love it. I've just never loved it enough for the price. It seems like a really cool practical bag. I am a weirdo in this way and I know a lot of people don't feel this way. Um, I'm weird about chain straps. I so often see bags that I wish had leather straps, but they were given chain straps me being weird, you know, like the um, mini baguette from Vendi. For whatever reason, I wish it had a leather strap. I know a lot of people would disagree, so like, <laughs> uh, there's no right or wrong way to feel about all these things, right? Fortunately, I, I really like the one that Meredith unboxed recently. Um, Meredith is new to YouTube, but wow, is she like knocking it out of the park like that. Why am I using sports metaphors? I don't even like baseball. Anyway, she is doing so, so well. Like her unboxings are amazing. Her energy on camera is phenomenal. Um, and she unboxed this really cute pink denim caro bag. I think the thing that I like most about that is the, how like the CD isn't just the typical gold hardware. It's this really like shiny pink. It's just, oh, it's so cute. I never really loved the interlocking CD chain on the caro bag for whatever reason. But like, I guess with these prices and it's so easy to fall in love with things, like maybe this is just me letting myself be really picky. Um, Cause I, I like the bag, but I've never loved it. <laughs> to answer your question in the longest way possible, um, I'm gonna try not to ramble with all of these. Up next, uh, Dale's addiction. Dale, you sneaky lady. <laughs> she says, in reality, laughing face. <laughs> She's laughing at my pain. <laughs> um, in reality, do you think you'll be able to get the green classic flap out of your head or will it come home with you? Now, Dale, I really appreciate your optimism with those two choices, but you neglected the third, which is that I will not be able to get it out of my head and it will still not come home with me. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> She knows how much I love green. And I have sent her pictures of this classic flap that I have just agonized over for the past few years. Um, as you might've heard, Janelle's had a few price increases. Yeah, over the last two years. When I bought mine, uh, that was what, two years ago now, and it was under $6,000, like just barely, but still it was under 6,000. They are now over $8,000. <laughs> So I took a picture a few years ago of my like dream classic flap. You know, when you would go into boutique and there would be tons of classic flaps in a variety of colors and textures and yada yada. Like the only one that was really hard to find at that point in my experience was the black caviar lambskin classic flap. But I took a picture of this green classic flap several years ago and I have dreamt of it ever since. I am embarrassed to say how much time I spend looking at this photo, uh, but I just, I, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can let myself spend the money. Um, with the current season, they have this gorgeous green. That's how Dale and I got talking about this again recently. Cause I'm like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, my essay says that a small green caviar classic flap will be coming even though I haven't found any evidence on Instagram that this bag actually exists, that it was made for this season. But I just, I'm a little bit worn out with the mystery, the smoke and mirrors, just all uh, for that much money. I just, I'm hesitating and I don't know if I can do it. So Dale, does that answer your question? I don't think it'll ever happen. 
<laughs> not a big deal, it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, next question from Lux Petite, Jamie, love you Jamie. Uh, she says, how did you and Ben meet? Um, and then if you could buy any handbag right now, what would it be? Hugs from Chicago. Um, so I'm gonna combine your question with another one that someone asked. Um, Tracy asked me, how did Ben meet and what was our first impression of each other? If you don't know, Ben is my husband. We've actually known each other for 11, 12 years now. We met in college. We met in a socio-anthropology class and we saw each other three times a week. He sat behind me. I just, we both liked each other at the time, but we had no idea. We've actually only been a couple for four years now. Yeah, four? Yeah, we've been married for two. It, for me, it was like this instant attraction. I just vividly remember looking forward to seeing him every single day. He was funny, he had a really cute butt, still does. Still really funny too. <laughs> like, I just, and I still feel that way whenever he comes home. Like, I kiss him goodbye every single morning and greet him when he comes home. I mean, cause I work from home, he doesn't. And I just, I look forward to telling him things every single day and hearing about what he's up to. Um, and I vividly remember those butterflies going into anthropology class three times a week, just really looking forward to see, seeing him. Um, he used to wear these like acid washed, really tight jeans and black band t-shirts. Oh, I just, oh, I, I remember looking at that butt. <laughs> anyway, he, um, I really liked him. We had no idea that the other liked each other, stayed vaguely aware of each other through social media when life took us in different directions, different cities. Um, and then we were both in Philadelphia at the same time and met up for a drink. That was that. So, uh, and then, oh, on to Jamie's next question. If you could buy any handbag right now, what would it be? Um, I think someone else asked me this also. Oh, that Speedy 20 girl. Um, she asked me if money wasn't an object, what bag would you buy? I, Hmm. If you asked me two weeks ago, it probably would have been uh, the Kelly 28 return style in a deep green color or purple. And to be honest, I don't know if that's true anymore. Um, like, and this is like the, the bag where I'm like, if I could just snap my fingers and make it happy, happy, <laughs> make me happy happen. If I could just make it happen, money, no object, just do it. That would have been it. I don't know if it's true anymore. And that's part of what makes me pause spending that amount of money on a bag. Like people change their minds, but it's also just the chase. Ah, and I, I can't help but think about the I just, mm. okay, so if I, truthfully, the answer to this question right now, as changeable as I seem to be, um, the answer to this question right now, if I could snap my fingers and have any bag, money, no object, it would be a made to order mini peekaboo. I would like it in a plum purple ostrich with a fuchsia interior. Don't ask me why. Um, <laughs> it's my channel. I, that would be it. I don't know why, but it just would be. I That is the bag that I am fantasizing over. Um, to go on to the other question that that speedy 20 girl had, what are your three favorite handbags that you do not want to live without? This is really hard. The first two are really easy. And again, I love to agonize over these hypothetical scenarios, even though hopefully I'll never <laughs> have to just pick three of my babies to hold on to and abandon the rest. Um, I think about, okay, like what's the most functional? And then there's just like, what's the most beautiful, like hard to get that I wouldn't be able to, I'd, uh, I don't know, it gives me those flutters. Now, picking two in this category is really easy. My mini reissue, that was a gift from Ben. It's really functional and I think it's beautiful. So that's an easy check. Um, Probably then the Fendi Peekaboo, the Lunar New Year collection. It's picking the third one that's the hard thing. Like, I love my mini Velextra. 
a C-Day bag. I, mm, but then there's the Chanel 19, the tweed one. Can I pick four? <laughs> Can I pick five? <laughs> uh, I think I'd have to go with the tweed 19, I think, or the new Louis Vuitton backpack. I, I don't know. I refuse to pick a third. <laughs> That's really, picking that third one is, is the hard thing. Um, I'm, uh, okay, just for the sake of it, I, I'm gonna go with the tweed 19. Moving right along, uh, hopefully I'm not rambling too much. Uh, Lynn says, hello from Chicago. I'd like to know which lesser known handbag brands do you think have excellent quality and, oh no, I clicked out of it, okay, <laughs> and are just not talked about. For example, you mentioned Mark Cross in one of your videos and I've never heard of that brand before, thanks. I love Mark Cross. It does not get talked about nearly enough. I would, if I had to pick a top three, Mark Cross would definitely be in it. For my number one, I'm gonna have to go with Full Extra. I never see them, they're gorgeous. I think just for my needs, I like the quality and the functionality a little bit better than Mark Cross. The bonus with Mark Cross is that you can often get them 50% off, but they stopped doing that so much with their uh, Grace mainline handbags. And I think it's because they realized that everyone was of course waiting for the 50% off. Um, I would have to go with the Lextra because the Acide, the, the mini Acide bag, I seriously consider doubling in that bag. And I've never doubled in a bag. In, I thought about doing that for the Fendi Peekaboo and that one. And that just does not get nearly enough love. That's part of the reason why I was so excited to make a review for it because I could barely find anything for it. And it is one of my favorite bags. Uh, Lauren. Romeo, she has a great channel. She says, I want to know what your most favorite thrifted item is. And I honestly do not know how to answer that question, Lauren. You know, you know how much I love thrifting. Um, I did find a, gosh, some of the really cool things that I've loved finding, and I'm not including like secondhand luxury handbags in this. Um, for super cheap, I found a Celine silk shirt. I still have it. It's kind of a difficult color for me to wear. And it's, uh, I mean, it's a workwear, like elevated kind of like classy shirt. Um, so I haven't had a chance to wear it. I also found a black Prada blouse um, that I, I used to wear quite frequently, but it's a little bit tight on me. It has buttons all up the back. Oh, I love, I love, love, love that blouse. That might be one of my favorites. Um, I also found a Christian Dior trench that was like $30. It was in one of those like enormous warehouse thrift stores where like the people working there, they don't care what it is. They just only pay enough attention to see what category, what like rack it needs to go on. That was a little bit too big, but I mean, with the price, <laughs> I could not let it go. I ended up giving that to a friend of mine because the it, like vintage, it was like an oversized, really cool look. And I just wasn't confident wearing it. Part of me wishes I could like still wear it occasionally. I ended up giving that to a friend. So, oh, I just, uh, oh, I recently found a linen jacket from a brand, okay, from a designer who worked with Picasso in his early years. He like studied architecture and whatnot. I ended up working with Picasso in his early years. I just, I love those little stories that you would have no idea. You're looking at this like beautiful but unassuming jacket and then doing all the Googling later, I just, I can't, to, an to not answer your question, Lauren, <laughs> I have no idea. There's a lot of pieces that I'm really excited about, clearly. Um, Fuchsia Floyd, fantastic channel. You should definitely check it out. Um, she asked, oh, and fellow marching bander. Awesome, love that. Um, in case you wanted to know how cool I was in high school. <laughs> um, I loved marching band. I'm getting sidetracked. I just get really excited about marching band and fellow Banders, okay. Um, Fuchsia Floyd, she says, uh, I asked this question to Jane the other day. What are the three criteria you consider when buying a bag? That's Jane Church, another fantastic channel that you should definitely see. She's trying to reach a thousand subscribers and she's awesome. So I definitely re recommend checking her out. The three criteria, um, can I afford it? <laughs> Is that a cop out to say that's number one? Um, 
I've tried to find the words to describe how I shot because like impulsive isn't quite right, but I, I think from the outside it would look quite impulsive. Maybe it is and maybe I just don't want to label myself as impulsive. I, I don't really know. Um, I, I obviously look at the style. Is it a style that I find annoying? I've recently been really annoyed with zips, just zippers and extra things required for me to like get into the bag. Um, so of course, like I always look, can I afford it? Is it a style that I find easy to use or will I be so, so annoyed? with this bag. <laughs> um, I really, I like a simple flap. I, I like to be able to get into it one-handed. I don't care about the size. As you probably know, I will buy teeny tiny little bags, um, but extra zips will for some reason annoy me. <laughs> um, also, okay, on the topic of little micro bags, I, I don't see why <laughs> it's a crazy purchase. Like to me, it is like combining a wallet and jewelry, right? If my husband can leave the house with nothing but a wallet and his keys, why would it be insane for a woman to do the same? Essentially, that's what fits into those micro bags, my keys, my cards, a chapstick. Um, it's like wearing, I mean, it's like that plus jewelry. So there you go. <laughs> um, Oh, I'm doing a really bad job answering these questions, aren't I? Okay, so those are the first two. What's the third thing? The the third factor is it's just the butterfly factor. It's it's just that flutter in the tummy. Like, does this make me crazy? Like, do, does it does it give me the flutters? <laughs> that, that that's really the just the three things that I think about. Um, I think like mostly practical things, right? I want to be able to use it, but it, it needs to make me see stars for those prices. Um, but even just like not like for the coach kit, that's a really affordable bag, but it checked off those three things for me. It was just immediate love and I knew I'd have a really easy time using it. Now for Hazel's questions. Uh, hi Hazel. <laughs> she, she says, no limits on money, time off work. Where is somewhere you'd love to visit? I, oof, um, probably like a New Zealand, Australia trip. I have fantasized about going to New Zealand since Lord of the Rings came out. <laughs> and I, oh, I mean, the, it's beautiful. It's not like anywhere I've ever been. I, that would be very, very cool to have no limit on money or time off because obviously it takes me a little while to get there living on the East Coast. I think that would have to be it. Um, and plane tickets are a little bit pricey, so. <laughs> um, Hazel's next question. No limits on money, apartment space. What is the one thing you'd love to own? Doesn't have to be a handbag. <laughs> Just this enormous handbag. <laughs> um, I want the, a handbag the size of a sofa, Hazel. <laughs> Um, no, I, uh, um, is, I mean, unfortunately there are a lot of things I want. Um, I would love to have a really big but beautiful squishy chair. Um, Ben likes very modern furniture, which tends to be tiny. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, maybe a leather one um, that by some magic the cats won't be able to destroy. I would like a really big, comfy, squishy reading chair. Um, maybe. I would also wouldn't say no to a nice big bathtub. <laughs> it's so hard. Um, he's class, you asked me really good but hard questions. Um, next one, which is the one I have thought the most about. Living or Dead, what is the musician band you'd love to see live? Oh. I didn't know. I didn't know. Um, there are so many. <laughs> I have no idea.
Oh, I love music. Um, Hazel, I'm refusing to answer that question. We can talk about it later. <laughs> um, oh, and Hazel also asked me, um, oh no, okay. What, which book do you wish you could read again for the first time? That is really, uh, Hazel, you asked me such good hard questions. Um, because there's just something magical about reading a book for the first time. I reread American Gods every so often. Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite writers. Um, I also definitely remember the magic of reading Harry Potter for the first time. I mean, who doesn't remember where they were in some key moments, you know, like with the passing of Dumbledore. I just, I, I'm assuming we can say spoilers at this point. Uh, there, there is something magical about those childhood books. Like if I could be transported back to the age I was and reread some of these books also in this hypothetical scenario, oh, that would make this even more impossible to pick. Maybe American Gods. I don't know. Or Neverwhere. Oh, that's another good one. Hazel. Oh, I love you. Okay. Uh <laughs> Patricia, um, another fantastic YouTuber. She just makes me so happy. I can't help but smile when I watch Patricia. Uh, she asks, what's your best dish that you can cook? And can you make a cooking video? Ooh. <laughs> I, I'm a free spirit when it comes to cooking. My husband was actually a trained chef if you're curious. So for a few years in our relationship, I was way too scared to cook for him. And then I started to get back into it because I, I do really like cooking. I just tend to see what's available in the fridge and throw things together. I get inspired obviously by dishes we have out and I try to pull little elements into it. Ben has definitely made me a much better cook because there's just some techniques that I didn't really have before. But Oh, I make, I make a really good spaghetti sauce. I do, I do. Um, making a cooking video would be kind of hard. I'd probably need Ben's help filming that. Um, mm, I, I'm a simple kind of gal. I like either like a base of brown rice or potatoes or noodles and then whatever veg I have and then protein. I, yeah, I, I just, I like, piles of things and smishing it all together. That's the kind of cook I am, Patricia, so I don't know if that's really helpful. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear any chomping in the background. The cats are having their lunch, uh, but I did put this question up on Instagram as well. I'm gonna read those now. Uh, My Fashion Kills asks, what's your favorite era slash decade for clothing and handbags? Those for me have two different answers just because handbags, like without a doubt, now, I don't think anything can beat the variety, the quality, the functionality. Like for me, and I, as much as I love my vintage handbags, because goodness knows I do, nothing, nothing beats what we have now. Clothing, uh, 50s to 60s. I love that. I love those styles. Um, just the mood, everything. Oh, you can hear lawnmowers now. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that'll go by. Uh, Living Lux with Meredith, she has a phenomenal channel, fairly new, and she's just, she's really killing it. Um, and her collection is amazing. She's the one who I mentioned had the pink denim Kara bag. If money were no object, what bag are you buying? If I could, a made to order peekaboo. Or there is, oh gosh, I, mm, I don't know. It really is such a quite hard question. If that wasn't an option, like if I have to, take from something that is actually available to me. However, I would like to know that if money were no object and I could buy any really, any bag I wanted, like I would probably be at the tier where I would be able to get the made to order peekaboo. So I think it's still a valid response. <laughs> See, I told you, I think too much, too much about these questions. Um, I, I love that peekaboo. Styled by Gwenny, Gwenny. Oh, Gwenny. Um, she says, no question yet, just wanted to see you rock. I, I love Gwenny. You just can't help but smile when you're watching Gwenny's videos, and that's exactly the kind of content that I, I want to watch now. Moving right along. Um, Agent Bag Reviews, another great channel. She says, at what age did you start getting into fashion? I guess high school. Probably when I could start thrifting. Um, and just 
when I felt a little bit more confident in exploring clothes, like before that, I just didn't want people to look at me. I didn't want any kind of attention. I was really shy. I've talked about this in previous videos, but I had all these misconceptions around like what it meant to be a girly girl and to like fashion. And I just, I wasn't confident enough to explore style. And then I realized just all the freedom that comes with just accepting yourself for who you are and how you can express yourself with fashion. Uh, so probably high school. Um, Lula LV, she asks, what surprised you the most about doing YouTube? Uh, this is, honestly, um, YouTube, I, I love, I love YouTube. I, I, I have, goodness knows, I have spent enough hours watching it and I wanted to do it many years prior to actually getting into it. Um, but I knew a lot of the stuff that comes with it. I knew that you'd get trolled. I knew you had to be kind of careful about what you said because if anything could be misconstrued, it definitely would at some point. I, I knew <laughs> that as soon as I put up a shoe collection video, I'd get the feet people asking me things and I'd have to block them. And like, I knew all that. Um, the thing that surprised me most about YouTube is how it has been an education in love. <laughs> um, sounds kind of corny and I'm super sappy and gonna try not to cry. Um, <laughs> but doing YouTube is the thing I didn't expect, the thing I didn't really ever see coming, um, that no one could have prepared me for even with saying it, like how it has been education in all kinds of love. Um, learning to love and accept myself in a new way, because it's definitely very cringy watching yourself and having to edit videos, doing all of that. Um, learning to like accept when I made a mistake and just like move on, put it out, just do your best. Um, realizing just how much affection you can have for people you've never met. Um, I, I just, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't really know if I can put it into words, but I, have become friends with some people on here that I've, I mean, maybe someone would call them a pen pal, but like I deeply care for them and I believe that they care for me um, in some ways. Like I think I've met people on here who know me better than some of my in-person friendships. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's just been an education in all different kinds of love and exploring that. Uh, classics with a quirk. Oh gosh, I love her channel. Speaking of love. <laughs> love her channel. Uh, quirky. A favorite dessert pie, hands down, or a chocolate chip cookie. I, something, fun fact about me, I never had birthday cake growing up. I only ever wanted pie, and as a result, I also only wanted pie on my wedding day. Um, but yeah, I mean, either pie or a really gooey chocolate chip cookie. Quirky also asks, what is another language you would like to speak fluently? French. <laughs> so many. If I could have like any superpower, it would definitely be able to speak and understand languages just instantly. I have so much respect for people who can speak two languages. Just, yeah. Um, I would definitely say French. French, yeah, French. Uh, Classics of the Quirk also asked me, what's your dream vacation? Location, activities, food. Um, well, so I guess this is slightly different than the other one, money being no object. Uh, maybe Japan. Mm, this might be kind of lame. I don't, um, I remember when I was in middle school, we had a computer class. Do they even still like do, I'm sure computer classes look very, very different now because 
yeah, this was like 17 years ago. Um, I remember having a computer class and one of our projects was to make a brochure for a place like pretending you're like a travel agency <laughs> and you have to make a brochure and I did one for London. <laughs> And I have wanted to go to London ever since. <laughs> it was like a very big deal to me. Um, I've never been. I've been to Scotland and I've been to Heathrow um, when I was on a layover to India. But I really, really want to go to London. Oh, I just, I want to go to so many places. And I've heard that they have really good food there. But maybe Japan would have to be number one. You guys keep asking me questions. I don't, I don't know how to answer. Uh, let me see. I, gosh, I think that was... I think that was everything. Um, I hope that I did not lose you with all my ramblings. I hope I got to your question. I Oh, I forgot to say this before, um, but I did mention on Instagram, there was a whole issue with YouTube not letting me access comments for a while. And it would then it would say that there were no comments uh, on the post where I put this. So I was worried that I lost a couple. If I didn't answer your question, I am so, so sorry. I took a screenshot. Once the comments became available again to view, I took a screenshot as soon as possible and I think I got all of them, but I am really sorry if I ended up missing your question. Please put it in the comments, comment box and I'll do my best to answer it there. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you next time. Bye.